Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, now that we've got our Blender character into Unity, and we're able to turn the game on here by hitting the play button, and we can see him running through his idle loop animation, what we need to do now is to hook up the run animation. So we're going to do that in the same way we did the idle. I'm going to select this character object here, and in the inspector we need to set up a new animation clip so I have the idle here I'm gonna go ahead and choose this armature action one that it created and I'll change this to run and earlier I jotted down on a piece of paper what the run cycle was and I've got it here it says 10 to 22 so if I scroll down now, hopefully I'll see a lot of green lights here that says I'm doing okay. I want to loop this animation. And I'm going to go ahead and choose these bake into pose settings here. Once again, we can always come back and change those. But now I'm going to scroll down here and hit apply. And once that's done, let's take a look at the... Uh, character here. We can hit play and see him run. There he is. Okay, so now let's get that run clip. We created this clip here from 10 to 22. We can come back into our assets folder, open up the character object here, and we should be able to see that run clip right here. So we created the idle clip and it appeared in here. Now we've created the run and it's also appeared here as well. So what we can do is come back to the animator. Let me open up this window a little bit here. What we can do is bring in the run animation clip and drop it here. And now our clip is in the animator. So the trick is now we need to transition from the idle to the run and then back again here in the animator. So what I'll do is right click on the idle and choose make transition, bring it up to the run and click, and then right click on the run animation, choose make transition and bring it down to the idle. Now we need a way to tell Unity when to transition from the idle to the run and then, and then back. And to do that, we're gonna use our parameters over here. So in the parameters panel, I'll click here to create a new parameter and I'll choose an integer. And I'll call this parameter um, anim parameter. How about that? Now when I look at the transitions over here, if I choose this transition, I can see that I have conditions here. So if I add a condition, I can say that this transition should happen when the animation parameter is equal to 1. And I can also say that we need to move from the run animation to the idle animation when the condition of the animation parameter equals 0. So to go from idle to run the parameter is 1. To go from run to idle, the parameter will have to be 0. All right, so let's go back to the scene. So now we need to figure out a way to trigger that parameter to switch from 0 to 1 and back again. And to do that, you have to have a script. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script by right-clicking here and choosing Create and C Sharp Script. And let's call this script player. Now I'm going to double click that and open up MonoDevelop. And here is our script in MonoDevelop. Now I'm going to say right up front that I am not a scripting or a coding guru. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know everything about how to do this. But what I can do is go to the Unity scripting documentation page and look for example code that I can use. And that's kind of what I've done here. So first of all, these two 
functions here, the start function and the update function. The start function runs at the beginning of every game when you first run the game, and the update function runs on every frame, so all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the code for switching the animation parameter. And then I'll go ahead and paste in the rest of the code and then give you a link to the finished script. And I'll put that down in the description of the video. So this script is going to be actually added to the player object. And what we need to do first is establish a link between this script and the animation controller, the animator, on the player object. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable to hold that animator reference. So I'll create a private variable of type animator, and I'll just call it anim. Then when the game starts up, I'll assign that new variable a reference to our animator. Now that we have a link to the animator, we can assign a particular keyboard button to trigger the parameter to change from zero to one. So what I'll do is I'll just use the up arrow since that will also be the force in which it will be pushing as well. So I'll say if um, the input is the up key, then what are we gonna do? Well, what we want to do is we want to go to that animator. Here's the, the reference. We want to set that integer parameter that we created. And we want to set the anim parameter to one. Now, if the key isn't being pushed down, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. If the key isn't being pushed down, then we want to change the animation parameter to zero. So now I'll save the script, go back to Unity. Hopefully I don't see any errors pop up here. And let's take this player script and drag it up onto our character. So now we should see that player script over here in the inspector when we choose it in the hierarchy. So I'll hit play. And we see our character idling and I'll hit the up arrow. And there he goes. And when I let up off the up arrow, he goes back to the idle pose. So before I get him moving around, I think he needs a surface to run around on. So I'm going to go to Game Object, 3D Object, and create a plane. And I will zero the position of this plane out up in the X, Y, and Z here. And I'll also increase the size maybe to 20 here. So we have a little ground plane for him to run around on. In addition, I think I'll bring in a texture for this ground plane as well, just so we can see when we're moving around. So I'll come here to the Assets folder, choose Import New Asset, and I'll just go to my desktop here and choose this checker pattern. And here it is. And I should be able just to take this now and drag it onto my plane and drop it and see it there in the scene. Now I think I'd like the checkers to be a little bit smaller. So I'll come over here to my material and scroll this down and I can choose uh, tiling here. And let's see if I can increase the number of checkers here by putting the tiling to two in the X and Y. So if I hit the play button now, I should be able to see my checker pattern. All right, so what we wanna do is get them to run around here. The first thing I'll do is create a character controller. And this character controller will allow me to reference it in the script and use that to move the character around. So with the character selected, I'll come over here to the inspector, choose add component, choose physics, and character controller. 
So what I need to do is adjust the height and the size of this character controller. So, because if you can see it, it's right down here. It's a little sphere at the base of the character. So what I need to do is get that character controller to fit around the character. So I'll increase the height here. And I'm going to go to an orthographic view to do this. Maybe the X and orthographic here. That's a little bit too big. And I'll take the height. I'll move it in the Y. Increase the radius some. And just try and adjust this so it fits around our character. So now just like we did with the animator, we have this component here. So here's the animator in the inspector and here's the, the character controller. We have to reference these components in our script. So if I go back to the script now, I can create a new private variable of type character controller, here it is, and I'll call this controller. Once again, at the beginning of the game, we need to reference that. So I'll say controller is going to get the component of type character controller. And there we go. Now there is um, a good deal more of the script that um, I'm going to use here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just for time sake, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy and paste. And I will add a link to the script in the description field of this video. All right, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some variables that we're going to need to move our character around. So I'm going to go ahead and paste these in here. And what we have is a public variable for speed, one for the turn speed as, as we're going to turn him from left to right. I've got another variable for the direction in which he's going to move and a variable for the gravity, how much it's going to pull him down toward the ground. I already have what I need in the start method here. So down below this uh, if statement, I'm going to put another if statement that will test to see if the character is actually on the ground. And below that, I'm going to put another couple of lines down here. Paste these down here. And what these are doing is it's looking at the um, input coming from the left and right arrows, or the arrow keys. It's doing some rotation here, and it's actually moving the character controller that we referenced in the script earlier. And this right here, the move direction in the Y, is the gravity that's pulling the character down. So let's save this script and go back to Unity and let's see what happens. If I hit the play button and I press the up arrow, he goes and he turns and he turns. He's not moving very fast and we're not following him. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> so what are we going to do? We need to fix that. There are a couple of fairly simple fixes that we can do here. First of all, with the camera, um, without getting too fancy, we can just drag the camera right on top of the character, like that, so it's now a, a parent, or excuse me, a child of the camera. So if I hit play again and hit the up arrow, now our camera moves with the character not real quickly, but we can adjust that over here in the script. So when we create a public variable in the script, like public float speed here, what a public variable will do 
is it will add that field to the inspector. So now we can adjust the speed here. So if I take this, say, up to 20, I don't know, let's give it a try. So there he is. So that is a very quick rundown of just getting your character moving in a Unity scene. So I hope that's been helpful. As I said, I will uh, put a link to the script down in the description of the video. If it has been helpful, please hit the like button. Check out my YouTube channel for more Blender videos. And subscribe to get weekly updates. Thanks for watching. Till next time.